and you call it whatever you're told to call it. I get that. Yeah, it's fine. She calls it a hutch, <laughs> so that's what I call it. Yeah, yeah. right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. module for that there of course there is cool so um, for everyone who's watching us now live or later in the reposted recording this is an offshoot of the Acquia podcast this is called jams Drupal camp which I think is a pretty catchy name and I had the idea that I get to see a lot of cool sessions, people talking about technology, talking about Drupal especially, but other things too. And some of these sessions just kind of get lost or it's hard to really find something from the past. And I'd like to take the chance to just bring some more attention to some things that I thought were cool and exciting. So I dreamed up the virtual Drupal camp, um, which you can find on Acquia.com. It has a landing page and it'll be also included in the acquia.com slash podcast stream and in the blog stream. So um, welcome everyone who's watching. Today I have with me Brent Wynn, who also happens to work at Acquia. And um, I believe your title is something like Solutions Architect. Is that right, Brent? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's, let's, um, let's talk about you for a minute. Tell us your first Drupal memory. Uh, my first Drupal memory, actually, I think it was on, um, well, it, it started, it was on Craigslist. I was looking for jobs, and I was a PHP guy, and everything said Drupal. So they all said Drupal or WordPress experience is a huge plus. And I said, well, I know about WordPress. I should probably learn about this Drupal if people are going to hire me to work on it, right? And so in the past, I had worked on some, like, CMS that I had built for clients, and when I found Drupal, I realized that I had just been totally reinventing the wheel and doing a really poor job at it compared to Drupal. So the first Drupal real memory that I have was a site where I had a client that just wanted to be able to log in. They just needed logins, and I had written the custom login for them, and it had taken me something like 20 hours or something like that. And um, I think a couple days later, I found Drupal and found that I could have just installed Drupal. So that, that was probably my first memory. Okay. And what what looking for work on Craigslist? Okay. Um, uh, what version of Drupal was that? That was when um, Drupal five was sort of in its its ending, and and Drupal six was just coming out. All right. So compare the Drupal you discovered then to to Drupal now. The Drupal I discovered first off when I first installed it, I didn't understand um, that I needed CCK and all of these other modules um, to actually add fields to content and things like that. So I was really limited in what I knew what to do with Drupal. And I was left pretty much up to my own devices to read API docs. And so I created a lot of my own forms with Drupal and did a lot of like custom module development with Drupal. When you, um, when, when you were also still just creating the, recreating the... Yeah. And so that was the Drupal I discovered. And then uh, over time, I sort of got more into contrib modules and best practices and things like that. So the Drupal that I know today is one where I don't write any code until I actually go and research and decide if anyone has done this already. And that's something that I also do now, you know, just in PHP in general, looking for libraries and things like that. So... It's a totally different world for me now, really looking at the whole landscape of what's available and getting rid of my uh, not invented here that I had when I first started. Okay, so you come at this all from a really technical perspective. How and when did you discover the community and the value of the community around Drupal? Um, it probably wasn't actually until I started working at um, Promet Source, who are an Acquia partner here um, in Chicago. Um, before that, I had done a lot of work with Drupal, and I had, I had understood that there was a community, sort of like a forum that I could go to and, and ask questions or find uh, issues and things like that, but I hadn't interacted with a single person in real life, really, um, really until probably 2010. Um, and 
ProMet were very active in meetups and things like that. And so that's where I really got opened up to the community and they had sent me to a DrupalCon and things like that. So um, that was my exposure was thankfully, thanks to Andy at ProMet and, and all the stuff that he does at the community, getting, getting me going on it too. Shout out to Andy at ProMet. Thank you. Yes. Um, talk about being an open source software developer. So for me, like it's, I, I take a lot of pride in being an open source software developer because to me it's almost um, a really, really religious sort of thing that I look at it from the perspective of um, I don't like to work on projects when I find out that we can't give back in any capacity, especially in Drupal because we've already taken so much to begin with that whatever like little bit we could give back would be so great. Um, and so that's something that I really sort of get um, heated about at times where I talk to people about, you know, they say, oh, I don't have time, we don't have time to contribute or things like that, or, or we're really busy and we just, you know, we have all these cool modules and stuff and we'd like to open source them, but our company doesn't make any time for it. And I just want to strangle those managers and say, you know what, you're really not doing yourself any service here because you're maintaining, you're, it's like you've bought in 35 to 40% of open source, but there's that whole 60% of getting other people looking at your code and fixing it and working together that they're not still buying into. And it's like all they've really bought into at that point is just, oh, I got some stuff for free. And it's so much more than that. Right. Kathy um, Faye's actually in Chicago as well has a great set of points that she calls the boss talk. Mm -hmm. And um, on, the, on the business side, talking with potential clients, I... Um, uh, and, and many others might talk about things like, hey, you know, if, if you commission this module, but then you open source it, you know, you've bought it once, but you get the upgrades for free because the community is going to work on it and optimize it and, and, and do all that stuff. But there's this wonderful other side of it that those managers need to hear about too. And, and, and I, I, Kathy made this very clear to me. Um, letting your developers work with an open source community like Drupal and submit their code and improve it in the community context. Well, you know, they're working with hundreds, depending on the context, right? Hundreds or thousands of the best developers in the field. So they get mm -hmm. every hour that they're actually doing that, they're getting um, essentially free training and, and best practices. And the Drupal community won't let you submit a line of code that's not up to standards and not secure and all that. So you're, you're actually getting a better, you're not just getting better software out of it, right? But you're yeah. getting better employees. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's, um, it's like free consulting for them too, really. What are you looking forward to most in Drupal 8? Um, I would say probably migrate in core. I think that's going to be a really big thing. I'm looking forward to it for two reasons. Number one, it's just going to really help me out because we use Migrate all the time. But number two, I just, I talk to people, so many people that are stuck on previous versions of Drupal. And to have that sort of exit strategy or, you know, that concept of, okay, we've got to completely reevaluate the landscape because we have this old Drupal 6 site. So let's look at other CMS and see like, cause we're going to, if we're going to have to just move off of this anyway, like let's reevaluate Drupal. That's so good for Drupal because they're not going to be losing all these old sites potentially to from from Drupal 6, but actually showing that there's a clear path for them just to get upgraded um, in in and also re-architect at the same time without losing anything from a content perspective. So just the fact that that's going to be available, I think, is great because it's the first time that we've had something like that out of the box in core. So it's really the path of least resistance points straight to Drupal 8 now instead of um, <clears throat> who, who knows where, right? So this is a, a, a tool where there is going to be a, a we guess we're going to still call it an upgrade path or a migrate path, or I don't know, but from Drupal 6 straight to Drupal 8, from 7 straight to Drupal 8, and from other systems to Drupal yes. 8, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so if you're on WordPress a, or something, Drupal core would actually be able to slurp in your WordPress blogs and make them into articles or whatever. Right, which is which is pretty wild. I don't know how many systems have built-in import tools for other systems. And, and I mean, maybe 
every single system has always had that except Drupal, um, and we're the last to get it, but it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be so, useful for some people, you know, because they'll actually be able to evaluate whether or not Drupal um, works will work for them in their organization um, m much more directly by actually seeing some of their content or whatever, as opposed to, you know, having to sort of wait until you build out the site and then. Right, and you can actually do really um, cheap demos of a, of a platform change too, I imagine. I bet that's mm -hmm. really exciting for uh, a, a job like yours. Right, where you're, you're getting yeah. proofs of concept. Yeah, ex precisely, because if they can provide us a data source, we'll be able to bring that in so we can do a look and feel for them and actually use their data source to build a POC potentially. So I'm looking forward to being able to do that. And then on the other side of it, it's just um, what we do in the demo framework uh, is all kind of migrate oriented because of the, the demo content gets delivered through a CSV file. So that's a pretty common practice that's used in distributions like it. Um, and in this case, we kind of take that to another level where we're able to do content resets. And I'll talk about some of that later, but having all of that in core will make our lives easier as we uh, upgrade the demo framework to Drupal 8. One of the things that, that I've gotten extremely excited about as the Drupal 8 release cycle has gone on is all of the new stuff that we're incorporating into Drupal 8 that came from other communities, other projects, other open source uh, things. Uh, as you mentioned, we've kind of gotten rid of the not invented here um, mentality. What, um, and I've had the chance to meet a lot more different software communities, uh, uh, a lot of people from Symfony and elsewhere, and, and I'm just incredibly excited by this toolbox that we're getting as as open source practitioners. Um, <clears throat> um, how do you feel about Drupal uh, eight uniting so many so like on a technical and a community level, bringing bringing so much together? Well, I think it's really great because it's showing um, that we're moving away from the 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 idea of Drupalisms, which is you know sort of a another term for NIH within Drupal as a as a framework to actually accept some of those those things and potentially give back. I'm really excited about some of the conversations I've had with people about the future of Drupal and how Drupal in the future could end up being something a little bit more like Symfony full stack and modules could end up being something more like um, projects that could be used in other systems. And so Drupal 8 is really the first step to that is, is getting you know to the point where f once we start decoupling and getting other, other systems into Drupal, the, the next step is really going to be saying, what parts of Drupal are reusable and how, how can we actually make this so that you know somebody like Joomla could use some, some of Drupal? That would be really crazy. But there'll still be, I don't, I don't think people should be afraid of this because I think there'll still be that Drupal that you can go and download that's prepackaged and it'll have yeah. the core components. And what we call core will be, like I said, something kind of similar to the Symfony full stack framework. But then in cases where you have like distribution, this is this has been a long standing question that, that has gone on with distributions always asking for the ability to um, really change things about core or not include pieces of core that they're not going to use. Um, and so rather than doing like kind of crazy things like patching things out or you know just including modules but not actually turning them on um, is no longer going to have to be an option. Um, you'll actually be able to package Drupal as different versions of Drupal, which will be really cool. Yes, yes, the loose coupling is very exciting. So I'm going to wrap up the podcast section of this. People listening to the podcast of this embedded on the acquia.com slash podcasts slash something 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 page for this is going to be a video and that is Branch doing his session talking about the demo framework and the demo framework is actually a Drupal distribution that started its life inside of Acquia is now accessible to everyone in the community and it is an amazing it is certainly the slick one of the slickest um, and simultaneously easiest to use out of the box uh, sales tools for you if you want to show a working functional Drupal doing really, really nice things to clients very, very quickly and easily. So, Brant, why don't you kick off? Uh, so, podcast listeners, thank you. Brant, thank you for talking with me. This is sure. really, really fun. And um, this is Jam's virtual Drupal camp, which is an offshoot of the Acquia podcast, where I talk with people about open source. Drupal, technology, community, business, stuff, rant, 
Um, it is way past my dinner time here in Cologne, so I'm signing off. Thanks again. It was cool. Take care. All right. Bye.